This video is not intended for viewers under the age of 13. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I realize it's been a little while, but uh, life is life, if you know what I mean. Today we're taking a look at the Heavy Artillery Roadblock, brought to you by Hasbro's G.I. Joe Classified line. Let's uh, see if the fourth time is the charm. Stay tuned. Bye. So let's take a quick look around the package. Uh, we have a uh, roadblock displayed on the front nicely in his plastic casing. Nice artwork here on the front. Of course you have G.I. Joe Classified Series, heavy artillery roadblock. Warning, yada yada yada. Uh, nice artwork on the side as well. And then on the back we've got the image we've grown accustomed to and I believe everybody in this image has been delivered except for oh, I forget their name is it Crimson Guard I can't remember let me know in the comments what their name is but uh, yeah I mean everything is out except for those and I really do wish they would uh, at least bring up some minor vehicles because as you can see, they have quite a few to choose from. Even the small trouble bubbles or something would be awesome. But here are the icons on the side. Do what you would. Let me know what they mean in the comments, by all means. Giving, I'm guessing this has to do with artillery and that as well, but lift lots of weights. And uh, he helped those kids out one time in the uh, public service announcement with the down power line. Or, in some cases, a body massage. Anyhow, let's get him cracked open and see what he has in store for us. So here we have Roadblock with all of his accessories. And I have to admit, it's it's actually, they're, they're pretty decent. I'm not going to complain. Uh, he comes with his Desert Eagle. Nicely detailed, done in a green plastic. So it just makes it kind of, I guess, meh. Uh, it does have uh, opening at the front. If you have some very small smoke effects, you can utilize those here. But it is detailed pretty well. Just could have used a little more color, maybe here on the, on the grip something it's just it's just it looks good but it's just it's a little plain he will hold the pistol perfectly in his hand even utilizing his trigger finger it is a very snug fit but you can get it to rest perfectly in his holster he comes with his helmet again nicely detailed Mounting point for night vision. Vented on the side for a little built-in AC. Detail on the top. Black paint on the straps, which if you look really close, you can actually see the detail on the little plastic buckle, which that's, that's pretty cool actually. From the back, it's nicely done. Looks like it's all sculpted in black plastic, plastic with the green being painted on. The helmet does fit perfectly onto his head. And here we have his olive drab colored minigun, which I gotta admit, I like it. It looks really good. It's not Madu's, but if there ever was a replacement fitting for the character, this would be it. This brings a more modern feel to the character. Uh, detailed right down to the trigger. All along the sides and top and even the bottom. We do have a little bit of paint here on the top grip. Black. There's the hollow barrels. 
nicely sculpted hollow on the inside and it does rotate which is a bonus and one thing I do like is that it is a different color than the one that's going to come with breaker in the cycle that being black or dark gray just adds a little bit of variety so nice and you also have the included ammo drum ammo canister whatever you want to call it not much detail to talk about on this it's just a basically a cylinder i um, notice that it is cut away on one side but not the other so that allows you to only put it in one way so there's no question about how to install it but it slides on wonderfully and as you can see he does hold it just fine there's only one real option as far as the holding method but uh, he definitely pulls it off kind of reminds me of that one scene from that one movie you know what I'm talking about So that brings us to the figure. Let's take a look. I'm gonna put up an image right here of the 80s cartoon and we'll see how it looks. I think he looks pretty good to be honest. The outfit is definitely more of an 80s cartoon homage than anything we've seen previously. Uh, they use a different head sculpt, which looks great with the beard Nicely painted eyes. Looks awesome. Coming down, you've got the camo, camo colored tank top. Nicely done vest, which is in somewhat of a rigid, rigid rubber. It's got some flexibility to it, but that's just from side to side. It's not going to give much when you articulate the figure, which comes down to the belt, which is plain, painted black. Coming down to the pants, these are the same pants that we've seen before on both iterations that have been released. You've got the nicely done black holster for his pistol. And from what I can tell, this that's actually glued in place. That does not move. You might be able to, to, to finagle it off there if you want, but I'm not going to do it. Coming down the legs, here is one weird thing that um, I actually noticed due to uh, MCU Collector 24's video. Um, all the other iterations had a knee pad, which you can see uh, right here on the Cobra Island roadblock. And in this situation, they didn't do it. So they put a kneecap on there, but it's not textured like the other pants. You can see the textured lines. There's nothing there, which I wouldn't have really noticed unless he pointed it out. It's one of those things where now every time I look at the figure, I'm going to see that. But going down to the legs, we've got the same boots we had before, just this time painted with a dark green and black rather than the gold or red or just plain black that we saw before. And then uh, boots done in black, nicely Tread it on the bottom. They look. He looks really good. As far as articulation, um, this has the the freest moving head out of any classified figure that I've had so far. But he can get way down, way up. The neck actually rotates if you can get it on that ball in the chest. Um, so you can get some very dynamic poses out of roadblock here uh, shoulders does have that built-in butterfly uh, arms can go up to 90 arm rotation more than 90 on the elbow which is double jointed wrist rotation and in and out on those hinges same on the other side uh, abs can crunch forward and back you can listen there they are ratchet you hear that nice pop in there uh, he does have waist rotation, though it is somewhat limited by his vest. Um, still does have the drop-down hips, so 
he can kick pretty high uh, out all the way for the full splits and limited back just because of his butt upper thigh cut double joint knee boot cut and the typical anchor rotation up and down that we're used to so articulation is the same uh, a couple of differences from the previous releases uh, his tattoo is not there as you can see on the original release he had the lion tattoo it's not there anymore um, and again they did use a different head sculpt as you can see much more defined and much more realistic on this newer release so that looks really good less shine well there is still shine but it, it doesn't look like shiny plastic anymore it's got more of a, a matted dull look to it but it looks really good um so overall he is nicely articulated um just to me i, I don't know i feel like they're Recent releases have been somewhat lacking on the hips. Um, I feel like I'm struggling to keep the drop down hips in the up position for standing poses. And uh, I think as more and more figures come out, it just feels awkward around the hip region. I had the same issue with uh, the recent re-release of Firefly that I picked up from Target. But overall, very nicely sculpted and painted figure. And here he is with the other two versions of the classified series that have been released so far. Um, the Cobra Island on the left and the original release for the classified series on the right. I didn't pick up the variant because I already had two roadblocks that really didn't fit the bill for me, but then they announced this, this version. But the heavy artillery roadblock, in my opinion, is in the best one in the line so far and is uh, the most accurate as far as comparing to the 80s cartoon, which is where this whole journey began. So, so should you pick up the G.I. Joe classified heavy artillery roadblock? Uh, I think you should. He is uh, very nicely painted and sculpted. Uh, articulation is what you've come to expect from the classified line. He does fit the part. He's the Out of the four releases, he's the most accurate as far as comparing to the 80s cartoon. So he looks great. I know that a lot of people had pre-ordered him and had their pre-orders pushed back, as did I, but people are facing a lot longer waits than I did, which is unfortunate. But uh, keep smashing that like button or that uh, refresh button on Amazon, rather. And uh, hopefully they get them back in stock. It would be really disappointing if nobody's able to pick them up anywhere because he is a great figure. And uh, I do highly recommend it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button, or if you dislike it, go ahead and do that too. Helps me out either way. I uh, really... I am thankful for you watching the video and joining me today, and I hope to see you again next time.